My name is Joe Steffen, professor of biology and chair of the faculty senate and a member of the board of trustees. Been asked to serve as our master of ceremonies today for the hall of provosts or hall of provost as we were talking about yesterday uh, celebration. A welcome to uh, my fellow faculty, staff and administrators, uh, fellow board members, uh, board of overseers, community partners, friends of the university, to the ceremony where we will recognize not just the general contributions of the office of the provost, but more specifically, uh, the 10 years of outstanding uh, service in this office from our current provost, Dr. Shirley Willingans. At this time, let me introduce Dr. James Ramsey, the president of the University of Louisville. Thank you, Joe. Um, can everybody hear okay in the back? Okay, good. Uh, thank you, Joe, and thank you for your many years of service uh, to the University of Louisville as a faculty member. Joe actually came to U of L about 26 years ago, more or less. Shirley came 27 years ago. They're both faculty in the College of Arts and Sciences. So uh, they've been colleagues for a long time. And Joe, thank you for your leadership with the Faculty Senate. The State of the University Week is an opportunity for the university community to come together and to celebrate our successes of the past year, but to also look forward and to recommit to the future. This year's State of the University theme is celebration of faculty. And despite the budget cuts that we've been through, this is a time for us to recognize the extraordinary work that our faculty does every day to make the University of Louisville such a special place. Now we understand the important role of staff and we understand that faculty can't teach and can't do research if it isn't for the work of our staff. And we understand that we exist because of our students and we understand maybe we shouldn't use the word customers, but our students are our customers. And they're critically important to us at the University of Louisville. So we thank our staff and we thank our students for their many contributions to the university. But this year our focus during the state of the university is our faculty. Every team has a coach, a quarterback, a play caller, or someone who makes the plays, as I said and talked about in my remarks at uh, Owsley Frazier's funeral. The individual within the academy who is responsible for the work of the academy and the faculty is the provost, the chief academic officer of the university. I've told this story a number of times of my recruitment to the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. And I'm going to tell it again today. Uh, many of you have heard it. Uh, I had taken a leave from another university to work with Governor Patton on the higher ed reform in 1997. And after the passage of the Post-Secondary Education Reform Act of 1997, we had a convocation, a symposium, a celebration of the passage of the legislation. And our keynote speaker was Michael Hooker. Uh, the Chancellor of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And Michael was a dynamic leader. Uh, he understood the knowledge-based economy. And Michael was one of those rare individuals that knew where the puck was going to be and how the academy needed to skate to that point to be successful. Um, and Michael was just a, a very charismatic and very dynamic individual. And he was our keynote speaker. And so at the end of his remarks, I, along with about 400 other people, uh, got to introduce ourselves to Michael. And uh, so I guess that I could say I knew him, but I really didn't know him. About six months later, I was back home in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and it was a Saturday morning, and I got a call from Michael. And Michael was actually attending the Gator Bowl. We played the Tar Heels this weekend here in Louisville, but, and, uh, so, uh, but uh, that day, the Tar Heels were getting ready to play in the Gator Bowl. And Michael said, I need you to come and join me at the University of North Carolina. And Michael said that, and this was typical Michael. He said, our goal at the University of North Carolina is to be the 
very best public institution in the country. Not one of the best, but to be the best. And then I know BS when I hear it, he went on to say, I need you to join our team. So Michael was making me an offer, but I've been around the academy long enough to know that there are processes that you go through, and that part of the process would be for me to go and visit campus and to go through the interview process. So I did that, and I flew to Raleigh-Durham, and they had two full days of schedules for me. The first night, though, I met with the search committee that had been set up for the position. This was for the position of vice president, vice chancellor for finance and administration. And so that evening, we were having a dinner meeting, and there were all these people in the room who had their game faces on, and they were going to ask me all these hard questions and find out who this barefoot Kentucky hillbilly was. And um, their very first question to me was, what do you see your role as the vice president for finance and administration? And instinctively, I answered, it's to help the provost. It's to help the provost do their job. For you see, in higher education, we have many aspects to the university. We're proud of our athletic teams, and we have programs for our alumni, and we have outstanding physicians who provide the very best in clinical care. But we're first and foremost an academic institution. And so the provost is the chief academic officer, and the provost is the one that makes, calls the plays and makes the things happen at the university. Now that story goes on. I, the search committee told me that night after we finished dinner that that was the right answer. <laughs> and um, they were going to recommend me to Michael. We moved to North Carolina. Six months after I got there, Michael was diagnosed with cancer. And then six months after, he died. Let's fast forward now to August 2002. Dr. Shoemaker had left for Tennessee. Carol Garrison was asked to serve as the interim president. And then she accepted the prestigious presidency at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Our board of trustees was totally uh, desperate. And so uh, they asked me if I would serve as the uh, interim president while they went through a search to find a real president. And so I was asked to come here and wait on campus and I'd get a call. And so I went in to the trustees room as they made their selection. And after the vote and the meeting was over, uh, there were a lot of congratulatory handshakes and so forth. And at the end, as everyone was leaving, there was sort of this shy reserve person who had been holding back, uh, waiting for everyone else, as she always does, to uh, take their turn. And then she sort of almost shyly and meekly came up and said, hello, I'm your provost. <laughs> And I've been thankful for that day uh, ever since. Uh, it's been a great honor and a great privilege for me to have the opportunity to work the last 10 years with Dr. Shirley Willingans. So as Joe said, today is a dual celebration. First, we're celebrating on behalf of the University of Louisville the position of provost, recognizing the importance it plays to the mission of our institution and our university. And we believe it's important to establish, as part of our history and tradition, recognition of those who have served in this vital position. So today, we're establishing here in Gromar Hall, right in this area. Uh, I took Henry and Chuck out and showed them. So if you didn't see it as you came in, the, the, the heading over the door, Hall of Provost. We're creating this area by the Board of Trustees room as the Hall of Provost. The second thing uh, that we're doing today is recognizing Shirley for her, again, as Joe said, uh, incredible 10 years of service. At UofL, we like to say it's happening here, and it is happening here because of Dr. Willingantz and her leadership. Now, my poster that I'm going to carry everywhere I go where two or more are gathered <laughs> um, was over there somewhere, and I had to move it, so I can't see it, but if you look at it, uh, you can see the incredible progress that we've made. Progress that we've made since the beginning of reform in 1997, but more incredibly, since 2002. And 2002, of course, is when Shirley started. 
Carol hired Shirley as the interim, and Shirley reminds me every day that she has more seniority than I have, and I <laughs> try to ignore her every day on that one point, but anyway, she might say I'll ignore her on another point. <laughs> but um, the other thing that happened in 2002 was that was the first of our budget cuts, and we've been through 13 budget cuts since then. So when you look at these numbers, and I realize there's so much more to the academy than numbers. The real impact is the impact we have on people every day. Um, uh, it's an incredible uh, story. So uh, Shirley is the one that um, has called the play. She's made it happen. I know when she gets up here, she's going to downplay her role and thank all of those um, who appropriately have uh, played a key role but none of it would have happened without her leadership. So today, we're honoring uh, Dr. Willingans, and we're going to unveil uh, her portrait in just a moment for all who come to the University of Louisville from this day forward to see. Originally, the portrait will hang in the entrance way, and then will be moved uh, to uh, one of the uh, inner walls um, after her tenure is done. So at this point, I'd like to ask Dr. Willingans and Joe if they would join me now for the unveiling of her portrait to hang in lasting per perpetuity in the Hall of Presidents, and then we'll ask Shirley to make some comments. Thank you. How do you do this? How do you do this? Let me hold it. quite what to do with the blanket. Um, so this is a very great honor, and I am certainly very honored by it. Um, Marie Abrams came into my office this morning and said, can I talk to you for just a few minutes? And I said, no, you can't. I have to write my speech. And um, she started laughing. And I said, you know, usually I'm not too nervous about things. And this morning, I'm just a wreck. And she said, well, why is that? It's not about you. And that was one of the kindest, most perfect things that she could have said to me, because it isn't about me. So let me tell you a little bit about how this came to pass. Um, as many of you know, I, I consider one of my key job duties to give Dr. Ramsey a hard time. And so one of the days that I was giving him a hard time, I was pointing out that for a university that talks about the importance of diversity and inclusiveness, it is a little bit strange that you walk into the administration building and all that you see is a rotunda full of, of white males, many of them dead. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I said, we really need to get more women in the building. I should have known better because I do know that when you bring a concern to Dr. Dr. Ramsey, one of the things that is essentially true about him is he listens and he takes it seriously. So he mulled about this for a couple days and then he came back and he said, I got it, we're gonna create a, wall, a, a room of provosts. And I said, you know, that's just an adage of be careful what you wish for because you might get it. And um, that was how this all came about. And I think that, you know, as I have been thinking about this, this, this thing that it's not about me, I think that that probably is the most true thing ab about today. Um, I am extraordinarily proud of all that we collectively have done in the last 10 years. And Dr. Ramsey, of course, downplays the critical role that he has played in all of this, and that every university needs an extraordinary leader and um, a coach. And he has done that in just an amazing way. And everything that we've done has been because of him. So if we could have a round of applause for him. Um, yeah. And you know, I also think that um, in addition to it not being about me and needing more women in the building, I think that one of the other things that happens so often is people often introduce me as now we'll hear from our provost, Dr. Shirley Willingkantz. And I go up to the microphone and I've started saying, does anybody know what a provost is? And you can just see relief in people's faces that, oh, maybe I'm gonna tell them. Because no, they have no idea what a provost is. And it's this idea that in the midst of so many things that universities are being asked to do right now, we can never forget the the central thing 
that a university does is educate people. Um, that AAUP document that came out in the 40s, was revised in the 50s, reaffirmed in the 70s, says the same thing every time. That a university, a great university, is characterized by a faculty. A faculty who do research and are free to publish that. A faculty who bring their knowledge into the classroom to educate another group of students and another group of leaders for our community. A faculty who are engaged as citizens in the community, bringing their expertise out into the world so that things can be better for all of us. And in many ways, the provost of the university gets to be the face of that important role of the academic enterprise and the extraordinarily important role that our faculty play in that. So Jim is right. I do have a few thank yous today um, for so many people that I get to be the face of. Um, first of all, thanks to the senior staff and the provost's office. And um, you know, as we talk about improved graduation rate, improved retention rate, improved baccalaureate degree production. Couldn't have happened without Dr. Dale Billingsley, who has been such an important part of, of, of sometimes pushing through, sometimes inspiring through, sometimes cajoling through so many of the changes that we've been able to put into place. To Dr. Beth Bame and to Tracy Ells, who um, have, have told again and again the importance of graduate, uh, graduate education and have worked so tirelessly to be sure that faculty affairs and the rights and the responsibilities of faculty are protected and honored as we've moved so many of these things forward. I need to thank Dr. Mordine Taylor Archer because frankly when Jim and I started it was a much different university than it is now in terms of the relationships that we've been able to build with so many people here who felt disenfranchised and disconnected and Mordine has been a critical part of, of making sure that we've had that bridge um, to people at the university that have wanted to be sure that they have our ear. To Bob Goldstein and Gail Rhodes and Connie Shoemake and um, Dave David Hine, who really keep so many of the pieces of the provost's office going through the Center for Teaching and Learning, the Delphi Center, the scorecard, the metrics, the strategic plan. Um, I don't know how many numbers Bob has crunched, but probably more than he has ever imagined he would see in a lifetime. Um, so thank you so much to all of you. To the other staff, Karen and Stacy, who try to keep me on track, and especially to um, Alicia and Carolyn and Kathy and Janet, who have worked for four provosts now um, and, and managed to help keep the provost's office functioning through all of that. Um, I certainly want to thank the other provosts. I know Tom Crawford is here. Tom has certainly done his time as, as acting provost and having done a number of acting jobs myself, I know that you really are doing the job when you're acting at it. Um, and also to Bill Dorrell and to Wally Mann and to Carol Garrison, of course, who have all, I think, stood up for that great academic tradition that every great university has to have. And of course, I am honored to serve with just the best group of deans ever. And um, extraordinary vice presidents and people have said that one of the things that characterizes this group of administrators is how much they all have each other's backs, how much they are all working together, how much they all support each other to try to move us forward. To Dr. David Dunn and to uh, Dr. Bill Pierce who are my colleagues and keeping all of this moving, extraordinarily grateful for the gifts that they give me every day. I just want to talk about two more things because I know some of you have been standing for a long time. One of the things that I think is most important important as we think about going forward is how we maintain our great traditions and our, our commitment to the academic enterprise as we are now being challenged by so many things that are asking us to become a truly modern university prepared to move forward into the 21st century. Questions like what is the right educational model as, more, as we continue to strive to give the best educational experiences to our students? How big should we be? How do we ensure access Access, even as we keep becoming a better and better university. Um, how do we think about new financial models that will incentivize us and inspire us and encourage us to continue to move forward as budgets continue to shrink and shrink? How do we think about this whole idea of governance as more and more of what a university does seems to be constrained by laws and rules and people making decisions outside of the academy? How do we maintain that central role of governance and shared governance as we go forward? These are some of the things that we will be struggling with and, and looking at this year so that we can continue to 
be and continue to become more of the great academic university and place that we want to be for our community. I need to thank the portrait painter. Um, one of the things that um, John Michael Carter has done a great job with this. I know when I went over to look at it once, he said, um, I've mostly got it. I'm having trouble with your nose. And as someone who's had trouble with her nose her whole life, um, I was very sympathetic to this. But it's my grandma's nose and my dad's nose, and it's the nose, and he was just going to have to figure out how to get it on there. So my compliments to him for doing a great job. And of course, an extraordinary thank you to my husband, Greg, who I've been with since I was 22 years old, my daughter, Kit, my other daughter, Sarah, who's not here today. Without their love and support, I wouldn't have done anything. So thank you guys. And of course, to Dr. Ramsey, who's just the best. And I'm going to stop now before I need the tissues that Julie put under the podium. Um, and again, thank you all very much for this extraordinary honor. Thank you. Thank you.